So by now, my dear friends, you have been in the Patreon and heard the episode 129 of David Brill, Louis Ruel is his ex-employer who knew him from the 90s all the way to 2010 and talked about his sort of origin story. Um, and you're probably shocked like I was, a little horrified, probably wanted to start calling Andy Cohen. I tried, I tagged him, I did what I could. You know, he's not a fan of mine, so getting him to listen to something I do is tough. But needless to say, it's in the Patreon if you guys wanna see it, but by now I'm sure many of you guys have sent someone in to listen to it and like tell you about it if you haven't heard it yourself to get the cliff notes, and it's all good. I'm just glad to get the word out. Okay, in a safe way for both David and I. Now, especially after seeing tonight's episode. All right, let's get into my weekly Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 13, episode 14, on the season finale, only next week to go before the reunion. That's a doozy. I know what's gonna happen at the reunion already, so, you know, definitely gonna be uh, intense. By the way, if you guys are still in there and you did sign up for the diamond level, this is the bonus audio that has all the details about the Real Housewives of New Jersey reunion, behind the scenes, everything. So have fun if you want, if you want to, if you want to go there. It is like a definite spoiler alert. Okay, so one last thing before I start. I have a surprise at the end of this video for you guys, so stay to the end. I'm going to start tonight's recap at the point where Danielle Cabral is talking to her mom and, you know, crying because her brother doesn't want to make up. And the mom's like, I'm sorry, I've tried. And he doesn't want really anything to do with you, essentially. And I guess hearing that really obviously upsets Danielle. The fact that her mom doesn't even have the power to make him you know, try to reconnect with her. So that's, this guy really holds a grudge, no? This brother, I mean, obviously a big social media hater. I mean, what the hell did Danielle Cabral do on her social media? Because I believe the key is in a video or something that she must have done that he took personally. So I'm sure if we could figure out what was in that video, maybe she made fun of his wife, maybe she made fun of him, I don't know. But it's not just a video that pissed him off. It's something deeper, at least in terms of the content she put on her social media. Just saying, has to be. Has to be at this point. The only thing it could be. By the way, just while we're on the topic of Danielle, the people who referred Danielle Cabral to the casting for Real Housewives of New Jersey are threatening to sue Danielle because she hasn't paid her commission percentage to them uh, for getting her gig. Uh, she was a housewife, uh, so she probably made about 120 k and that's on the low end, because I'm sure with inflation it's gone up. Back in my day, first season housewives, that's what they made. Maybe she's making 150 now with inflation. I've heard 30000 an episode. So they probably would like to get their percentage, which if it's 30,000 an episode, it's gonna be somewhere between three and 5,000 per episode that she owes them, 10 to 15%, depending on the deal that she had set up with them as a agent or manager. Some managers take 20%. Then we jump to Jennifer Aiden. Jennifer Aiden is busy getting her brother's apartment ready for him to arrive. He had to go back to Turkey during COVID because his wife was in the process of getting her green card, but it hadn't been issued yet. And she had to stay in Turkey in the country while waiting for it to get you know, issued. So he went back to Turkey to be with her during that period. It took two years. And now he's coming back to sell jewelry in America and start his whole life there where he really wants to be you know, settled and his wife has joined him. So Jennifer takes it on herself to get him an apartment using her connections. She gets him a cheap place and hires an interior designer to make the furniture he picked out look even better with accessories professionally designed. This reminds me of Jennifer Aiden's 
old reality show she did called New Money because on that show she talks about Turkish jewelry and diamonds and she's all about how she doesn't know what a cost of an egg carton is because she's so ridiculously rich and over the top in her lifestyle and she surrounds herself with like a, a lot of jewelry stores as part of her storyline in that show. She also kind of has a vibe of like she can hire people to do things and like before and after type stuff like kind of like this apartment. I am a huge HGTV fan, so I really enjoy Jennifer Aiden doing like the apartment reveal. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, make more of this because I'm like ghosts, tiny houses, and like, and international house hunter, I'm obsessed, okay? I could do a whole thing about it. Like, I wanna live in the country, but he wants to be in the center of the city. Our budget's like $200 per month but he wants to go to 400. I'm uncomfortable with that. <laughs> I've always wanted to go on that show. Tonight we get the question answered. Uh, as you saw in last week's recap, I shared you what Joel Fuda's son's mom said from prison about Rachel Fuda wanting to adopt Jaden. She seemed to think that it was for the show, but I think tonight when we see the scene between Rachel Fuda and Jaden play out where she asks him, do you want me to adopt you? Even though it may be some drama with your mom, he does want her to adopt him. And so there seems to be a real bond there. It's hard for a teenager to lie, even on TV. So I think we can safely say that Jaden feels a very strong bond with Rachel Fuda and hopes that she'll adopt him. So we'll have to see how it goes. By now you're like, Jesus, where is Laura Lee Jensen in all this? Why haven't we seen her on the show? She had lunch with Teresa and Jennifer Aiden. Well, the reason that that didn't happen was Teresa said she didn't want cameras there. And so the rumors were that she had shot a scene for the show with cameras, but she didn't because Teresa didn't want it. She just wanted to get the tea. Yeah. So that's why Laura Lee Jensen doesn't make it on the show in any of the scenes, but what a fail on production's part. But needless to say, um, Laura Lee Jensen has, you know, front and center, although not on the show at all. We're starting to feel the heat that the Melissa Gorga cheating rumor is going to come out, which they've waited and waited and waited to drop. So one of the tea items that came out on tonight's show was that Laura Lee Jensen was asked by Teresa, what ammunition does Margaret have on Melissa? Because Teresa couldn't figure out why Melissa didn't turn on Margaret and the friendship just wasn't enough for Teresa to believe that there wasn't something else. And I'm gonna give you some gossip about this in a minute, which will make it un you understand this a lot better. So then Laura Lee Jensen said, well, actually you're not wrong. Margaret have, has something on Melissa and Melissa will never turn on Margaret if she you know, is aware that Margaret has this on her. Laura Lee Jensen makes it seem like Melissa knows that Margaret's publicist caught her kissing some guy one night and it wasn't maybe a big deal at the time then because she thought it was going to be a secret. But then of course it comes out, you know, in this way, which is what she was hoping would never happen. And uh, Margaret, you know, has already called out Jennifer Aiden's husband for cheating. So why wouldn't she use it if uh, Melissa got out of line with her. This is so Jersey, watch this. Right now, let's go like that. All right, <laughs> very Jersey, all right. So allegedly, there are quite a few people that have dirt on each other behind the scenes, and that is how people are kept in line. So just so you know, it is not just Margaret doing this, okay? Teresa, may shock you, has a secret on Jennifer Aiden. And if Jennifer Aiden turns on Teresa, she's gonna spill that secret. That could happen any day, okay? So that's one example. But now you know, Margaret had something on Melissa. 
And what I hear, and I don't know what it is, is that they all have something on Dolores, but no one will say it because they love Dolores too much, but they all keep it in their pocket. Now, I love Dolores, so even if I find out what her deep, dark secret is that they all know, I don't know if I'll spill it. I may be like them. I like her too much to do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because she's so nice, <laughs> like in real life too. So, but yeah, I know. Get, get cracking on that one. I know you guys are. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe she had like a, a thruple with David and Frank. Wouldn't that be crazy if that was the secret? I don't think so. No. I love Polly, by the way. Love, love, love Polly. And I know he's going to ask her to marry him. I called it, I called it like the first week she met him. Irish guys don't mess around. When they love you, they love you. And it just is magical. So I'm so happy for her. So here's the text that was leaked. It was leaked to Dumois last year. I think, uh, I can't remember what month, but it was in 2022. And it, you know, is Margaret's text to the group, which she CC'd Laura Jensen on to not be a backstabber. And also let everybody know, like, she knows everything kind of thing. And I think probably Laura may have leaked this to do because she's, she reached out to a few bloggers, right? So here it is. This was the big juicy text. I don't think it's that juicy, but I'm going to read it to you. Happy Sunday, everyone. I'm so sorry to write this, but Laura Jensen, who is on this group text and I have brought into our group, has unfortunately attempted to insert herself in my employment and contacted and met with my castmates, Jennifer Aiden, to undermine me. And Margaret wrote in the leaked text. There it is. If you choose to associate with her, please do not include me. I, I know this is very housewives of me, but we should all know when there is a snake in the group. I hope none of you revealed anything to this beast. So what caused the fight between Laura Lee Jensen and Margaret? Basically, Laura Lee Jensen described it to the real Andy of Beverly Hills. She said in that interview, he was the first one to get it, so I'm going to cite him, okay? So what happened was she wanted desperately to feel like Margaret saw her as an equal, Laura Lee Jensen, that she would, you know, because they were friends for 20 years, if there was like a great party, like let's say OK Magazine, that she would be invited to go with Margaret. And, you know, when she was trying to woo the production company to bring her into the show, that Margaret would try to also have her back and do that, like push for her. And Laura Lee Jensen says that she wasn't invited to a few parties, like I'm saying, like an okay, let's just say, magazine party, and it hurt her feelings, it hurt her ego, she was like, you do nothing to help me get on the show and then you make me feel like a loser because I'm not famous. Margaret probably makes her feel less than because she's not on a reality show. And it's very difficult to be around people that do that. You know, reality TV stars have huge heads. <laughs> anyway, the point is that didn't, that upset her, right? But then on top of it, she got wind somehow that Margaret was telling the producers, like, don't bring her on. Now, Margaret said, that's not true. I tried to get her, you know, in front of the producers for two years, but they just didn't want her. And that's the truth. And she just didn't want to accept that, that they didn't want to cast her. So I wanted to have Laura Lee Jensen on my show, but she didn't want to go for some reason. All I'm going to tell you is what I was going to tell her. I was going to say, number one, I totally get how awful it feels when one of your best friends is on a reality show as a housewife and makes you feel like you're not as important as she is because it happens, I think, probably to most people who know people on reality shows that are close to them, okay? That's like awful, normal, and it really does piss everybody off, not just you. So I totally feel for you, sis. But beyond that, I did want to say, if the producers really wanted to hire Laura Lee Jensen, they would have. They didn't give a shit what Margaret says. And even though Margaret thinks she's got a lot of power, which is great, they're not going to listen to her on casting. They may listen to a referral, like, this is my friend Caster. But like, for example, Taylor didn't put me forward, they still casted me.
In fact, Corey Feldman was a friend of mine and his manager was a good friend of mine and he got the casting and he sent it to me. And I said, that's funny. I shot that show last season with my good friend Taylor because I was her event planner on her four-year-old $60,000 birthday party. Uh, what the hell was the theme of that? Oh, um, the tea party. Here I am on E. I was pregnant. I was six months pregnant with brown hair because I couldn't dye it. And then I went through the whole casting procedure and Taylor had an option to refer someone and didn't refer me. Just saying, I found this out from Russell. So yeah, and this is like, housewives do not want to refer people because you might take their spot. They don't know if their best friend's gonna end up being better than them on the show. Just saying, that's a thing. And it's not to blame Margaret because frankly, all of them do it. Nobody refers anybody like willingly unless they have to, like their job's at risk if they don't. Well, even then they don't. <laughs> so we see everybody getting ready for this prohibition party that's happening at Polly's house. I love that he, he did, made the joke about the drawers. It's so true in Ireland, everyone calls underwear drawers. And so he's having this beautiful party. I'm really excited for it, but there's obviously going to be some big drama that we're gonna see next week between Louis Ruelas and Joe Gorga. And we also are gonna see it between Melissa and Teresa. Um, it's going to be, I heard, very disturbing. Um, so get ready. By the way, you guys, I'm gonna change my hair color, which is why I'm growing it out again. I know you hate when I do this, <laughs> but it does keep it looking like good with dye. But the new color I'm doing is so outrageous. You're gonna die. Okay, maybe I'm having a little bit of a midlife crisis. It could be happening. Listen, did you guys catch the whole thing with Louis Ruelas tonight about Joe Gorga and how he rants at Teresa Judice? Well, I just want to say, like, he was treating Teresa like she was Joe Gorga. And she was. he was like, I don't know if you caught it, but he was like, making her the bad guy for how angry he was at Joe Gorga. So I felt like I wanted to jump in like, and be like, Louie, stop bashing Teresa to get your point across about her damn brother. Like every time something upsets you, are you gonna come for Teresa like that? You're gonna go yell at her for what's upsetting you elsewhere and attack her. I mean, it was really hard for me to watch that scene. Now I know a lot, obviously. Some of you do too now, but that was tough. Listen to this for a second. I get money, and I'm telling you this right now, those girls are in. I'm telling you this because this really sucks to see this guy in a house that I would want to be in. I worked so hard to get to that level, and he's stealing it all from everybody. How do you think he's gotten to the level that he's gotten to with DMS? And do you Because the guy, let me tell you something, and don't take this the wrong way. Please, I'm not a hater. He is a stupid, stupid, he's not very intelligent. He only made it through a semester of college, but that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything wrong with that. There was a lot of brilliant people out there. But he is a charmer. Um... A narcissist, he's, he, he, he'll swaggle his way in and follow your coattails and then steal it right from under you. You know what I mean? Yeah. What do you think his intentions are with Teresa now on Real Housewives of New Jersey? I think so. I, I think you know, he, he Hold on, I want to say this to you. He, he meets her, he sh shows her, like, uh, he love bombs her, he buys her all this stuff, then he buys a home that is like a $3 million home somehow. And her and her daughters move into the home. And then he takes Marissa's kids too. And they're, you know, and they're also. And what do you think his plan is? Um, I'm just... He's like, he, because he, he's using her to get the fame, to get... Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. Check out the description. There's loads of links to fun stuff in there. And um, I think I'm going to do a gossip dump for you guys. Oh, by the way, great guest on the podcast this Sunday. 
great guest. You're going to love it, especially if you liked Secrets of Playboy.